Please rise if you are able to for the reading of the scripture. I'll be reading from the New International Version, Romans chapter 12, verses 9 through 1. These verses speak of God's love. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those per who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live in peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for, it's, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals upon his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Thus ends today's reading. Thank you, Peggy, for pinch hitting for Lee on our scripture reading this morning. Well, welcome to those of you who are with us via radio, or if you've gone to our church website, or the Facebook page. I trust that uh, it's no coincidence that you're hearing this message today. Boy, it's been a while since I've had the opportunity to preach here, and so I'm grateful for this opportunity. Uh, I think a couple weeks ago I was supposed to preach on patience. God said, well, let me just have life bring you some things to help you learn that kind of message. Whew, and so uh, he did, he did. So I'm grateful to be here. And I want to um, start by uh, reading to you actual slogans on bumper stickers. These are actual slogans on bumper stickers that you can purchase for your vehicle. You may have one on your vehicle. You may have 50 on your vehicle. Okay, You're, I'm good with that, okay. If you have one of these actual slogans on your bumper sticker, okay, life's about choices. We all make our choices. Eat right, exercise, get plenty of rest, and die anyway. <laughs> if you are feeling good, don't worry. You'll get over it. <laughs> These are like legit. I don't know, I don't care, and it doesn't make any difference. I didn't say these are all upbeat, by the way. Do unto others before they do unto you. <laughs> Idiots surround me. I'm not talking about this current gathering of people. <laughs> this is a bumper sticker. Don't worry about life. You're not going to survive it anyway. Live fast, die young, and leave a good-looking corpse. My child beat up your honor student. Yeah, right, you see in the one? Yeah, okay, okay. That one kind of, you throw it out there, okay. Forget about world peace, visualize use, using your turn signal. <laughs> and finally, uh, most Americans have faith. You can tell by the way they drive. <laughs> Actual bumper stickers, there are thousands more we don't have time to read through. Those aren't all exactly in the positive kind of light. You know, today we're focusing on kindness and goodness in our belief series. Um, those bumper stickers, maybe a majority of those slogans, not really pointing us in the direction of kindness and goodness. But I think it's good to highlight realities of some of the negatives so we can really enjoy and embrace what is kind and what is good in the world. 
The Christian's response should be the action of Jesus, not the reaction of the world. We live in a very reactionary culture, kind of a knee-jerk reaction kind of culture where without thinking, we see people reacting, and there are some consequences to that, whether it's their lips or their physical selves. Jesus Christ has resurrected from the dead. I want to remind us of that. He tells us to abide with him, to remain with him. He is alive, so that invitation is open to anyone. He gives us the Holy Spirit because we cannot produce the fruit that we need in and of ourselves. So we look at these fruits of kindness and goodness today. What did Jesus do? How did he react? Look at his life. The one who is alive and resurrected and is with us and wants us to likewise reflect kindness and goodness in our world. We can probably think of a person who from time to time is going to do a good deed for us or has done a good deed for you, but you might not label that person as a kind person. But you can also think of a person who always has this good nature because that's just who the person is. Their, their goodness and their kindness, you can't separate that from them because it's part of who they are. And we love to be around those types of people. Those are the kind of people I like to hang out with. I hope I am that kind of person in my own life. So the virtues of kindness and goodness that are found in the list of the fruits of the Spirit, which again are listed in Galatians 5.22, they're almost always spoken of together, which makes sense in terms of kindness and goodness. And while the meaning of these two words in the original Greek are, are kind of similar, they're less like twins, and these two um, virtues are more like cousins, okay? Both virtues indicate how to respond to others from this, this deeper inner moral conviction of what is the right thing to do for the sake of that other person, okay? Think about the difference in this statement. What a nice thing for you to do versus you are such a kind person. Separating a kind thing, a deed, that someone might do for you, but they may not be the kindest, most pleasant person you know, versus someone who, who does kind things and good things because that's who they are. That's who they are. Kindness is doing something that the other person feels positive about, but goodness now listen to this thought. Goodness does the right thing for a person even if it may not necessarily feel good to you or to that other person. Goodness can sometimes be called tough love. How many parents in here? Raise your hand. Ever have to exercise tough love, right? For your son or for your daughter? because it speaks the truth or it withholds something that could be harmful, but it's actually going to benefit the person. I exhibit great goodness and kindness to my boys when I say to them, boys, you cannot walk across South Bluff Boulevard. <laughs> because most folks don't go 30 miles per hour when they go by my house. But regardless, I'm showing that tough love. You can't be in the front yard. But Dad, you can't be in the front yard because it's dangerous. I'm doing this for your good. So the purpose of this message, let's, let's do this. Let's define goodness like this. Here's the definition of goodness. Consistently, goodness, consistently reflecting the character of God in our motives and in our actions. Well, what's the character of God look like? Get to that in just a moment. So as a believer in Jesus who continues to grow and mature in their faith, goodness is going to start to gain more territory inside of you. So much so that other people around you are going to start to notice that about you. And they're going to maybe ask you questions and want to be around you, seek you out, make a phone call, send you a text. 
They can't miss what's happening inside of you, the kind of person that you are. They see your fruit. And maybe without them even knowing the source of the fruit, which is the Holy Spirit, which is Jesus Christ who is alive and resurrected, and God is his Father, and Jesus and God are the same thing, the two are one. They're drawn to him. They're drawn to God, to the one who is really good. Okay, so God's character. What's he like? God. Well, Psalm 34, 8 says this. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Psalm 145, 9. The Lord is good to all, and his mercy is over all that he has made. And then Psalm 107, verse 1. Give thanks to the Lord. Why? The statement continues, the thought continues, for he is good. His love endures forever. So as with all the virtues we have looked at, our God, God is the perfect example of kindness and goodness. And throughout history, God has consistently shown his kindness and goodness to all people. Now, pause. Remember what we said goodness is sometimes. Sometimes goodness is tough love that we have to give to our sons or our daughters and those that we know and love about very much. Would God perhaps display goodness in tough love for us? Can we allow him to do that as his means of showing his goodness? Sometimes his goodness is not always everything you want fixed is fixed in the way you want it. And everything's a yellow brick road. Maybe not. But maybe he's still showing his goodness towards you. He's loving you and directing you in a direction you don't want to go, but it's for your good. Because he's good. He's good. What about Jesus? Well, if we look at him closely, we see that he reflects the same character throughout his entire life on this earth. Goodness, think about this, goodness, kindness ruled every motive, thought, word, and action that Jesus had. And because of his goodness, he always showed kindness through his, his miracles and his healings and his teaching. The goodness was driven by his love for his father and his kindness was driven by his love for his neighbor. The two work together flawlessly throughout his life. It's incredible. So in every situation and circumstance, Jesus is God, and so Jesus is good, and so for us to be good by nature and show that kind of kindness, to show his kindness, we must love and live through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit inside of us, there has to be this connecting, this, this activating to where, boom, it starts to work in you and produce this kindness and goodness. But on your own, you'll get to your car and you might fail miserably in showing these kind of virtues. But with the Holy Spirit's help, he can take us to places we can't go on our own. Luke 6.45, Jesus said this, a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart, and an evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in his heart. For the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. When your heart leaks, what comes out? Because we're storing something on the inside, Jesus says, and out of that storage comes a heart where there's good things. Or evil. Romans 12, 9 to 21, our, our scripture reading, marvelous passage, and the context to this as we kind of drop into verses 9 through 21, at the beginning of chapter 12, we're called to be a living sacrifice. There's, there's that thought and that challenge. And then Paul talks about this grace that we're given so that no one sits here going, Psh. <laughs> Paul says, no, 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 no. We've all been given grace. What a gift. And so he says, here are the marks of the Christian. Here, here are the things that 
the world should see in us. And it's funny because I looked at a Bible commentary and it said there's nothing to say or add on to what's said here in this passage. Like, it's, it's ridiculous to add on to this because what Paul says here is so simple, it's clear, it's helpful. Any commentary is going to get in the way. Love and action here in verses 9 through 13. We see what an unhypocritical love looks like. Um, real love, not fake. It should be sincere. We should hate what's evil. Go to the good. Be devoted to one another. Honor one another. Practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Don't curse them. Don't be proud, but be willing to go low with others. Don't repay evil for evil. Do what's right in the eyes of everybody. If it is possible, by the way, if it's possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. You do everything you can with God's help to do your part. You cannot control how others may react. Don't take revenge. Leave room for God's wrath because God says, I will avenge. I'm not missing anything that's happening in the world. I'm not missing any tragedy, any crime, any injustice, any suffering. I am not missing any of it. I know sometimes we look around and go, really? God says, it is mine to avenge. You give that to me. Actually, God says, I have that. I'll never give that to you, please. I will avenge, I will repay. Instead, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. And when you do this, there's this really weird cryptic thing. It says, you're going to heap burning coals on his head. Wow. Okay. Yeah, man. Look at him. You're going to fry, dude. No. We're not trying to bring about physical pain to that enemy that we have. Instead, when we offer goodness and kindness to that enemy, his or her conscience is going to be so impacted by how you act or don't react that he's going to feel shame for what he has said or done. He will either come to repentance or go insane because of your actions. The enemy could possibly come to repentance and hate all that they've done to you and promise to never do it in the future. Can God do that in your enemy? Can he change them? Paul says, when we live this way, it can happen. All this is possible by the fruit of kindness and goodness that we display to others. Everybody, I hope, has a scratch piece of paper. We encourage you to grab one. Don't worry, you don't have to move, you don't have to go anywhere. My wife and I went to a, uh, hear someone share, it was her college roommate back in February, and she's with an organization called I Can Help Delete Negativity Online. I believe that's the website, and the hashtag, my phone's not with me, but I believe the hashtag is I Can Help Delete Negativity. Christina can, yeah. Oh, hashtag is I Can Help. That's the hashtag for Twitter. And her former roommate, Kim, held up a piece of paper. And she, she's talking to like 500 middle schoolers. She said, guys, this paper is you. Hold it up like this. And I want to encourage all of you to do this. And she said, for every word you have maybe said to someone, or if someone has said or acted towards you in such a way that's made you think negatively about yourself, has made you sad, she said, I want you to crumple this paper a little bit. So for instance, you're so dumb. She said to those students, and, I, and I'll just say to all of us, if we have ever conveyed that to someone with our words or actions, or if someone has conveyed that to you, crumple your paper. You're so stupid. You're so lazy. You're worthless. You're a loser. 
You're a mistake. You're clueless. I hate you. You're ugly. You're not cool. Stop there. It took about 60 seconds for a majority of those middle schoolers to have their paper look like this, right? I don't know what your paper looks like now. The unkind words, actions, that maybe have been sent our way or we have sent towards others, and our lives kind of become a crumpled up piece of paper kind of looking like this, right? Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That is goofy. Words hurt. The power of words. Now let's do this. Let's reverse it. When I say these following words, if you've ever been told these words, or you've shared that to someone else, uncrumple your paper a little bit. You're such a kind person. Thank you for caring about me. Man, you're a hard worker. Thanks for going the extra mile. Great job on the court tonight. Thanks for not picking on that kid at school. You're beautiful. You're exceptional. I love you. I'm glad we're friends. Hopefully, we just reverse that process. That uncrumpled life can be fixed through our words. And just because someone has done something wrong to us, we shouldn't see it as a license to return the wrong. Folks, a lot of people today feel justified in being nasty to other people who have first been nasty to them. If you're on Facebook, if you're on Snapchat, if you're on Twitter, if you are on Instagram, a lot of this social media that's going on, and I know for some adults you're a part of that, or youth as well, but even if you're not on those platforms, there's a ton of this negativity, this, this unkind stuff going on. We have a phrase now called internet troll. And when an internet troll, this is an individual who on purpose goes online and puts comments and things to produce anger and arguments amongst people. These are people we don't even know who they are. Don't be a troll. Don't be a troll, please, on the online platform. But unfortunately, with our youth culture, but also with adults, nastiness, nastiness out there. We can change it, right? We can change it as followers of Christ. Every morning, we ask God to give us an opportunity to take the good he is depositing in our hearts, and we can give it away to others. We can give it away to others. So when we encounter others, we can try to say or do something kind because it builds people up. It, it makes a difference. The kindness and goodness that we give to others, it can be like a medicine for that person's soul. It can actually, God can actually use your words, you showing kindness and goodness to other people, to bring healing into that person's life. God can do that through us. I've seen it happen. I've experienced it in my own life as, as well. On this piece of paper, I want, at least before you leave today, in the next couple minutes, if you've got a pen or a pencil there in front of you or in your purse, your bag, write down a couple of thoughts. How has God been kind and good to you recently? Write it down. At least start the process here and maybe fill out more on this piece of paper throughout your day and keep this piece of paper with you. The invitation is there if you've got your piece of paper. How has God been kind or good to you? Maybe today, maybe yesterday, maybe in this past week, maybe in the last month, maybe in this season of your life, over the years. You can just jot down a word or a phrase that's what this piece of paper is for. Go ahead. I'll give you about 60 seconds here. Write down how God has been kind or good to you. 
and just start, it, start that process today. Keep this paper with you and write maybe some more things down before your day is said and done. You're, you're in a sense writing your own psalm. How cool is that? You're writing your own psalm. Just like David said, God, I thank you for this. You've shown this kindness and goodness to me in my life. He wrote that down, and we read those passages, and we are encouraged. You do the same. Write your own psalm as you have seen the kindness and the goodness of God displayed in your life. May it be true of us. May we show that kindness and goodness. We have the opportunity now more than ever in this world to be those kind of people. And it's through Jesus and his Holy Spirit working in and through us, that's how that fruit can become a reality. Be kind. Be good with his help. Let's stand for the closing. Lord, because of who you are, the scripture testifies to your kindness and to your goodness throughout history. And, and sometimes your goodness has looked different than maybe how we would define what goodness is. But knowing, Lord, that you love us, you, you show kindness and goodness in ways that truly reflect your character and who you are. And sometimes that's, that's, that's a mystery, and we're not going to have that all figured out in one sermon today. But I pray God will wrestle with that, and, and I pray that we have taken the time here, or we will take the time throughout the day on our piece of paper to write down, Lord, how you have been kind and good to us. We have the, the pinnacle of an example already in your son, Jesus Christ, coming to live and to die and to, to rise again and defeat death. What goodness you have displayed and shown and given to us through the gift of your son. And we pray, Lord, that knowing that that Jesus is alive and with us, that the Holy Spirit, if we, are, if we have made that decision to make Christ Lord and Savior, we don't work alone in this effort. The Holy Spirit helps us to produce the fruit of goodness and kindness in our lives. And so may that gain more territory, so to speak, in what we think, in what we say, and in what we do as we go throughout this day and throughout this new week. Lord, thank you for your goodness and kindness and all the ways you've displayed that towards us. Lord, help us to now reflect who you are by doing the same. We ask this in the name of the Father and in the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.